Hello everyone, welcome to another video. My name is Philip, I'm also known as PS, RPS Enough. So this video is about the road to Evoke. Evoke is a demo party. It's happening in August, uh, the second weekend of August. And I'm planning to go there. So I'm trying to figure out what stuff I can do for the competitions happening at Evoke. The previous video we already went through what uh, categories there are. And there are quite a lot. Uh, I can do stuff for a few of them. I've been brainstorming a little bit what I could do with the stuff I have. Uh, so I have a few ideas. I have an idea to do a demo about going deep into the wells. Maybe something uh, psychotic slash psychedelic with like a Cthulhu vibe. Like using very dark color schemes. And very hypnotizing. Like a slow zoom in to a well. Then you cut to another one, and then another slow zoom in with some uh, lines or maybe spoken word about falling deep into the well and how it pulls you to another dimension. So that might be an idea. I probably won't win anything with that, um, but you know, it's an idea. Might be worth exploring. I have a few well pictures already. It's a matter of putting them together and trying to do like a narrative for the thing. I've also been trying to do some random effects on Shader Toy, trying to get more used to Shader Toy. I ended up just doing plasma effects. I wanted to do like some scroller thingies going from one side or up or diagonal to be used as backgrounds of some sort. And then tweak the color schemes depending on what type of demo I'm going to make. I ended up just coding some plasma effects. Uh, but well... It's something, you know, if you don't have a fixed theme for your demo, just try to do some random effects and eventually you start being able to glue stuff together. So yeah, I've been trying that as well. And some other ideas. I had idea for the well demo that I already mentioned. And then I thought maybe I could do a performance out of it and use my tool Assisted Performer, which if you guys don't know, Assisted Performer is a tool that I developed on Node.js where you can link up several uh, other devices and use those to control stuff happening on the canvas and on the sound. So it's like a proxy system kind of thing. And it's easy to configure, or I made it easy for me to configure at least. Um, it's not perfect yet, it's not like automatic, but it, it, it can get the job done if I have a good idea. So I thought about that and I thought maybe I could do some sort of other stuff with it. So I've been thinking what other ideas I could do beside the well and make it a performance about the well. Uh, could I do some other kind of performances with more interactive elements, like using the audience more for the specific, for the interactive compo in particular of Evoke. So I thought since I have a lot of... Um, uh, controllers, I can get like all the smartphones connected into my server and each smartphone controlling some parameters. I could make it like purposely epileptic so that I have uh, simple effects with a lot of parameters that you can tweak. And if the user tweaks it, it does like a flash of some sort. So if everyone is tweaking at the same time, you just see a lot of flashes of a lot of stuff happening. And I thought we could use that as a concept to build something on. And not only the visuals, I wanted to have them epileptic, but also the words. And I would be doing some sort of spoken word thing, but uh, preparing a narrative. And then some people would choose the specific word for uh, this particular part of the narrative and you could change it in real time. So I would be saying, here comes a wolf. No, no, it's a bear. It's a wolfman bear, it's a pig. And the pig is going to the house, which is not a house, it's a hut, it's maybe a cave. So the wolfman bear goes into a cave and he screams something. So you can see the stuff changing. And of course the storyline would have been more or less nonsense. You can direct it or channel it a little bit. I have done something like that before with my generative uh, poem generator, um, where I could have like define the structure of the sentences and then specific verb or subject or whatever can be replaced by alternative versions. And then you just click randomize version a lot and it gives you a lot of different possible combinations. And that was that generated very interesting poetry. It's a very old project that I have, 
over 10 years old. Uh, but I used it on a few other different things. I used it on my game under uh, Searing Sky. And, uh, and yeah, and just for general poetry, when I feel like uh, I want to be creative writing poetry, or generative poetry in particular, I launch that pro program and I do a few things and then I save the final results. So it's like archived and you can just click random and see the end result a lot. So yeah, the idea is you do this kind of narrative. It has a lot of different possibilities, but all of them are like channeling a certain emotion or idea or concept or direction of some sort. So you're limiting it a little bit. So even though you have all the different options, um, you always see in the end of the whole thing, or in, even in the middle of the thing, where you are trying to go. So that is uh, the point of generative poetry or generative storytelling, for me at least. That's, that's what I find interesting. And not only you can do like, for example, there are a lot of synonyms to cold. You can say cold, you can say uh, it's freezing, you can say it's it's uh, lukewarm, you can say you're being thawed. So you can also say the exact opposite. And that also creates an interesting paradigm shift, like you say hot. There are a lot of cold options, but there's a hot in there in the middle. And people see it changing between the cold and then, and then end up with a hot. So they associate that it's uh, the opposite element of what you were trying to say. And it has like a, what do you call it, a sub subversive element to the whole thing. And that can also give very interesting results. At least on poetry, it gave very interesting results. I don't know if on complete narrative it would, but that might be something worth exploring as well. Anyways, I was thinking of this, maybe using some kind of this. I was calling it uh, epileptic performer. So it's like a, you're performing over an epilepsy uh, session or scene or episode or whatever. And I was thinking then maybe there could be something like Cards Against Humanity of some sort. If you don't, guys don't know what Cards Against Humanity is, uh, several people get different cards with specific things said in it. And you have to complete each other's sentences and try to, try to make it the most horrible possible. So if I could relegate that part to the audience or some of that part to the audience and then I would just narrate it, I could do some comical stuff out of it. Um... So it depends a lot on what the constraints are. It's just an idea. I'm just floating around. Let me get, let me know what you guys think on the comments below. If you like this idea, if you don't, if you have any, uh, you know, additional ideas. And then I thought I could maybe may, maybe turn it more scene friendly and have do like a Cards Against Humanity multiplayer thing with scene elements like calling group names or effect names, stuff like that that everyone from the demo scene knows, and um, try to make some jokes about that. That could be an interesting performance as well. So yeah, these are th this is what I've been thinking uh, for the last couple of days. Let me know if you guys have any other ideas. I'm also thinking it fits worth make a try to make a 64K or not. Uh, if I could get someone to do an AHX uh, music, I could maybe do that. And I have the idea for the wild, um, for the animation compo, which is based on style transfer, which I need to get the style transfer algorithm to work locally on my machine so that I could apply it to all, to the entire frames of video, not just single frame. So I don't know if I will have time, patience to try to do that or not, but if I manage to do it, I'll let you guys know and show some tests and stuff like that. So yeah. That's the video for today. This is what I'm planning to do for your book. What about you guys? What are you guys working on? If you have any ideas, any suggestions for me as well? If you want to do some collaboration as well, I'm, I might be open for that, depending on what you can bring to the idea. I'm especially looking for a designer, of course, uh, because I'm not a very good graphic designer. So if you want to deal with the colors and scene and, you know, have a say in the direction of things uh, in terms of uh, colors and artistic vision that might be cool and just you know send me a mail or a tweet or something and we can uh, talk about it so yeah that's it for this video hope you guys enjoyed or at least made you think a little bit more what you can do for evoke 
Of course, there's also Inertia Demo Party one week before Revoke, but I'm planning to do whatever I do for Inertia will be done during that week. I'll probably do music for 4K and then try maybe do a couple of effects and do a demo out of that. Um, or maybe if I'm working on something for Evoke, I can reuse the same material or do testers. I don't know. We'll see about that. But I'm focusing more on Evoke and Inertia is whatever I can do during that week that Inertia is supposed to take place. So yeah, that's it. Hope you guys enjoy. See you next time. Bye bye everyone. Take care.